What is going on guys? Welcome back. If you saw our last video where we repaired my 240 catch can, you will know that I am probably one of the worst people that can weld aluminum. So I have decided to change everything to stainless steel. And today we're going to be doing the catch can in the R32 and we're going to be making it out of stainless steel. So I got my sheet here. I actually have two sheets. This is 14 gauge stainless steel. That's what we're going to be making this out of. We're going to TIG weld it. And in here I have all kinds of things like I've got the bung and the drain that I'm going to put on the bottom. We have the stainless steel dash 10 AN weld on fittings. We've got 10 feet of 10 AN line, which should be plenty. And we have our fittings. And these are pretty cool. I have links to all this stuff in the description for you guys, but these are pretty cool. They are the press in valve cover fittings for RB20. So we have all of that. And then the last thing that we have is this stuff. This is actually like aquarium air filter stuff. I literally only needed like a sponge size section, but this is the smallest amount that I could buy on Amazon. We're gonna use this as the filter on the top because what we're gonna do is copy the S13 catch can that I have. But in this video, we're not gonna be hooking up the lines and everything because there are some stuff that I want to do first. So I just wanna get the catch can built and then later on, we're gonna actually hook it up to the motor. And this is the engine bay that we're working with. The only area that makes sense to me is to put it back there by the wiper motor. I'm gonna have a interesting time trying to get the lines from here backwards into there. I think what I'm gonna be able to do though is tuck the line down under the throttle body on that side and tuck it down under the intake on that side. So we'll see how that looks, but that's what the plan is because I want to throw it back here. So first what we're gonna do is make a catch can out of cardboard and then we'll transfer that over to the stainless. So this is where we're at so far. This little piece off to the side, that is what's going to go on to the two bolts there. Right here, that's going to be where our two bungs are for the AN fittings. I want to have the bottom of this side higher than this side, so the oil that does get collected in here, gravity will pull it down to the drain. I could bring it out more because there's a bunch of room there. However, if I do decide that I want to do a top mount turbo with an external wastegate, that's going to take up a lot of that room. I want to try to keep it tucked in this corner just so in the future I don't have to redo this. So what I might be able to do is bring it out a little bit more, probably to like here, and that could give us more room on the bottom. So I have some of the pieces marked out, so I'm going to cut these out and then we're going to piece them together and then we can do the rest because this is like a rough idea of what I want. You can see everything is going to flow to this back corner and on the bottom of that back corner is going to be the drain. And then once we get this box totally made, then we'll work out the baffle system. So this is where I'm at right now. One thing that I need to say is that if you are welding with stainless steel, you need some kind of way to shield the back side of the weld. You can have argon in the back, which works really well if you're doing like exhaust or any pipes. With this, because it's flat, I can't put argon behind it. What you can do is you can have some aluminum or copper and have that on the back and that will help shield it. Or what I like to use is this mixture of solar flux and methanol and you get it to where it looks kind of like a paste and then you just paste it on, you let it dry because methanol is flammable. So you just let it dry on the piece and then you start welding. Because if you don't, you're gonna get that, which is not good. These welds are trash. Of course, this was just a demo piece. I didn't forget that you need to shield the backside. This was just a demo piece. And then on the real piece, we got it right. But I got it pretty far along. Everything's just tacked together except this piece as you see. But I just want to show you guys part of the baffle setup that I'm going to do. Right here is the front. That's where our two lines are going to go in from the motor. And we have this plate here so if oil gets shot through it's going to hit the plate and go down. And we want to do that because we don't want it to just go straight in and potentially out the filter. When oil goes through here it's going to hit this baffle which is going to push it down. So the oil is going to be pulled up in the bottom and then we're going to have the drain down here because this is the lowest point. Because the way I have it, everything's tilting towards the front over here. And we also have everything tilting that way because we made this point lower than this point. So it's tilting in two directions. So it's going to cause the oil to all go to this corner. And then we're gonna have the drain down here. But when oil comes in, it's gonna hit that plate, which is gonna drop it down. And then oil is just gonna pull up and build up there. And then we're gonna have a filter on the top. So 
so we're making very good progress. This is what we've got. I put that baffle in. I also put a piece right here down at the bottom that I drilled holes in. I put that there just so if oil is in here, it's, it helps prevent it like sloshing around. You'll typically find these in like fuel tanks and stuff, but that's it as far as baffling. And then I have these two here are just so my filter can rest on them. So we'll just have this guy just up there. Right now I'm getting this little thing made that we're going to be putting in this corner and this is gonna go there. So that's gonna go in there and this piece is gonna get welded to this bottom corner. And once we get that done, we can get this front piece welded on. I already have my little cardboard for it. So we'll transfer this over to our sheet of stainless. For the top, I'm just gonna cut whatever the measurements are for this. Then I'm gonna drill four holes in it and then take the grinder and connect them so we have a nice big open space and our filter will just sit in here. So I want it big enough to where we can pull the filter in and out if we need to replace it, which we have a lifetime supply of extra filter material. I don't think I mentioned this before, but we are not going to be recirculating back into the intake. There's arguments for both ways, but my main thing is I don't want oil going into my intake system. So even if this catch can is amazing and oil just stays pulled at the bottom, never goes back into the intake, I just don't want to risk it. I already had to clean out the entire intake system with the old motor because we had a bunch of blow by and oil got everywhere. I like to not do that again, so we're just gonna have oil just sitting here and every now and then I'll drain it and check and make sure everything is good. So but we're getting pretty far along. I'm actually getting low on argon. Hopefully I got enough, but we do have a little ways to go before we finish. So we got the drain welded to the bottom. So this is the highest point here and this is the lowest point. So any liquid that goes in here is just gonna get push that way. So now all I need to do is get this front section on, weld the two A and bungs onto it, and then once I get that, then we can do the top. So we got the front piece welded on, so now what I want to do is fill it up with water and make sure we don't have any leaks, and then we'll finish welding it. So here's the completed catch cam. We got our fittings on, we got the drain done, we have our little baffles in there, we got our little mounting bracket, everything is good to go. So I just want to do a real quick test fit on the car just to make sure that we're all good and then I want to paint this. So we have the catch can installed. We have it mounted with these two factory studs on the strut tower. They're for the bracket that the upper control arm mounts to. So you can see we have plenty of room. It's underneath the actual wiper motor and we have room for the drain. I just need to put a hose on there. So everything's ready with this. So now we're just going to paint it. I might use this sparkle stuff too much, but just look how cool it looks. I don't know, I really like it. It might just be like a phase I'm going through, but to me the sparkle stuff just makes it look that much cooler. So catch can is complete. So now I'm just gonna install it on the car and then we're just gonna leave it there. I've actually had it on the car for a couple days unpainted just to see if there was any issues with it. Maybe the bracket wasn't strong enough, but it's held up and everything's good. So we're just gonna throw it back on. And then whenever we're ready to do the lines, it'll be already installed. So now it's installed, that's how it's gonna stay for right now. It looks really nice. It's the same color as the wiper motor. The wiper motor also has the little sparkles on it too. So that's totally done and I'm really digging how that looks. One step at a time, the engine bay is becoming more complete. One day, we're gonna have a front facing manifold. I don't know when, but Whenever I do a front mount intercooler, we're going to do the intake manifold at the same time. So that's going to be it for this video. This video took way longer to make than you'll ever know. But thank you so much for watching. Check out some of my other videos and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.